Hey everybody, what a night this is going to be. Hey everybody, Ron Onesti here, artist on lockdown, hanging and banging with you, episode 54, and I'm so happy to see you all. We took kind of a, a week off, we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, I am here tonight with uh, a great show, as we have for the last 53 weeks or so, and uh, joining me tonight, two legends, two icons, two brothers of mine. We'll start out with, I'm going to call him Little Vinny because it's Big Carmine, so Vinny Apice, Blasted Line, Dio, Black Sabbath. What's up, brother? I love that T-shirt, man. Like that? It's the summer. I'm wearing white. Summer of white. I can't, you know, I just can't. You, you worn white one other time. That white dress mob shirt that you had on that time. The oh, collared yeah, yeah, yeah. white shirt. Other than that, I can't. I, you <clears throat> must well, have. That's got to be the only white shirt. Yeah, I got two white shirts. This one and that one. <laughs> But we've been, I've been getting a lot of emails from girls watching this show, and they seem to, they say the same thing. They want to see more chest, more chest hair uh, from Ron. You got the you got button it, all the way. There you go. Yeah. It's an I Italian thing. It. <laughs> you need to hey, put listen, some hair in there. It's, it's, I got plenty if we can get close, but I'm Italian. You I know, don't get I got too more, close. I got, I got more Italian than my, I mean, more hair on my chest than my grandmother did because that's a big thing for us, you know. So, so are Italians. you somewhere or you're not at an airport? I'm not at an airport this time, man. It's been crazy the last couple of weeks, I know. But I am, I'm here at, uh, <laughs> in St. Charles, Illinois, rock and roll heaven. And it's really, you know what, I hate to say this. It's really great to see you. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it really is. You know, oh, I really missed you. That. No, saying. no, no. I really am. I want to say everybody. We got so many people. We got from Cork, Ireland. We've gotten from New York. I'm looking at all our people. Brenda, Betty Ann, of course, Michael, M, Rich, uh, Paul Cimino, Benny Ann Tavano, my, my, my Italian cousin. So uh, all, there they are. Jan Griner. Hello. Carol's there. Uh, Brian. Paul, so anyway, welcome, Paul. everybody. Yeah, we Paul, got a Paul's lot a of buddy. people. Every week, every week, it's it's multiplying. We're getting so many people supporting us. So let's bring our big brother to the to the microphone here because I missed him too. The guy with the, not only is he a legendary, iconic drummer from Vanilla Fudge, Jeff Beck, Rod Stewart, so many other projects. But he, I gotta say, probably has among the best hair in rock and roll. <laughs> Carmine, a <of> piece. <laughs> Better, 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 be in. Better, 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 better. You know, it's like Bob Moran, better. What the it. hell is that? You know what? It's a doo wop. That's what I used to sing in the, in Brooklyn in the subway. When his hair was combed back like that. Yeah, my hair was combed yeah. back like it's this. And I used to have to dip like that. You know. What do you take? You know, I've got the same I issue. Kind of. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know what's happening. You got to get know, a chia pet. Chia pet. pet. <laughs> hey, tomorrow, in. tomorrow I get to do my new photos, my new press photos. You know, PR photos. Well, we got to do our press twice. photos. Yeah, I know. When all of us together. together. It's all on Vinny because I'll fly anywhere. Down, why don't you come down to Nashville at the beginning of August? I will. Are you both going to be there? Yeah, we'll be there for three days. I we're will do some, that. Let's take some press shots. It's not Absolutely. That far from you. Doesn't and, matter. Uh, yeah, I'll come at it anywhere. And I gotta say, I gotta say, I honest to God missed you guys last week. You know, last week I was traveling a little bit. I was at Polestar, and uh, most of you out there. We were one. We were talking. We said, "Why was he in L.A.? Was he at Polestar?" I, I actually, decided. To go actually, we said it's nice and quiet this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of was nice in a little bit, but no, I was at Polestar with some of our friends out there. I got to hang with Sebastian Maniscalco, who was a speaker there, and a couple other guys. It wasn't as attended as it normally is, but you know what? It was yeah. nice to get away from Chicago for a minute. It, you know, L.A. was just. As a matter of fact, that was the weekend uh, L.A. opened up, man, and everybody yeah. was kind of walking like on eggshells, but it was pretty, pretty cool. You know, that being said, a lot of places are still shut down, stores closed. It's, yeah. it's a We're little in bit New York. In New I'm in New York now, as you can tell by the different background. And uh, yeah. you see this over here? This here is our, our ugly cup collection. Right. You got too much time on your hand, my friend. It, ugly now, now, cup. Whenever me and Leslie travel, we got some of the ugliest cups. 
I mean, look at look at this cup. I mean, what's the ugliest? Pick out the ugliest. How ugly this is. Okay, Fuck where's you. it from? It's ugly. I don't know. We have to go look on the bottom where it's from. This one is from China. Where is this from? Nick's birth, this is Nick's birthday. My son's birthday. Where's the other Hey, hey tell Leslie you come on the camera. Come on, Hi, Leslie. Leslie. Come on the camera. Say hello. Another look person look with look great hair. Look at, look at this. Cup. Oh, look at that. Okay. That so ugly? here's the thing. Here's what I'm thinking. Give me another ugly cup. One more. This Leslie's cup. hair. Oh, give me another cup. There she is. Beautiful. Hair. Yeah. This is an ugly cup from Italy. Here you go. You'll get that. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. First of all, there's nothing, Beautiful. no such thing as anything ugly from Italy, number oh, one. Oh, come on. Number two. No, no. Thanks, baby. The couple of those, anyway, you know, just that, anyway, you know, have more, a bigger mustache than you, Carmine. Yeah, I know. But what I was going to say here's the thing. New York, we can New York either. New York is open now, too. New York is open. Now, yeah, everything's open. Chicago's wide Street open now. Yeah. Good. Yeah. No, Chicago's wide open, and you know what? We could do one of two things. We can discuss all the ugly cups in the world because that is a very interesting topic. Or, very interesting. or we can. We've got two major rock and bring rollers them on. on the line. Bring them on, my buddy. First, I want to bring. I want to bring. Let's bring. You know, from from Sticks. You know, from just being Dennis to Young. Another legend, another hero, another icon. Let's bring him to the to the screen. Hey, Mr. Dennis D. Young. Hey, Dennis. <laughs> Ciao, ragazzi. Come va? Hey. Look at him. Another Italian cousin over here. And I got to yeah. say, you know, Dennis, been doing this a long time. I've been, well, you guys have. And I've been doing it a couple of years. But I'm actually entering my 40th year doing it myself. And you are the guy, I got to say, that has been such a friend, a mentor, a, just a, such a good guy to us. My brother, Rich, here at, you know, you, just really, you and your family, I just have to say thank you so much for being such a, a mentor and such a friend to us, Dennis. Well, thank That's you. not what he said before, Dennis. No, it's not true. <laughs> Get the pictures. Should have heard me. him before that, before we went on the air. <laughs> yeah. I want uh, I want uh, your Peace Brothers to know that um, <clears throat> I'm half Italian. Unfortunately, it's this half. But nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. you're talking That's about good. We've had more Italians on this show, yeah, right? That's right. Than anybody. And we got to know, though, is that background, is that a studio? Is that a studio you, in your house? Hold on. I'll tell you what it is. You know what that is? No. That's a green screen. Okay. Like for uh, Dean Simmons' uh, boot closet. Yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's 50 years of freaking history right there. Is no, that is. Seriously, nice. is, that, is that a studio here in the house? It's my studio. Yep. Oh, nice. Oh. I got a nice board. What kind of board is that? That's a Euphonics 2000. It's a uh, big controlled analog. It's on analog, right? An analog board, but wow, the, it's great. Play. Carmine. Set me free. Why don't you change? <laughs> my life, why don't you pay? Pick up your souvenirs. Yeah, man. Great. I used to see well, so That's awesome, man. Because, uh, you know, me and Vinny have studio. Vinny built my studio. We don't have a board like that. But uh, I love analog boards. We have a new song we just finished mixing. Stop in the name of love. Vanilla fudge. Done like hanging on. The last thing Tim Bogart played on. Wow. He was a great bass player and singer. That guy. Yeah, and, yeah, and singer too. We're getting it mastered right now, and it's going to be be out in the summer. And uh, congratulations! I love yeah. that song on stage because I got me. I could turn my uh, B three on and off real quick. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, actually, it was my Leslie. Yeah. What yeah. Anyway. Um, cool Dennis, man. Dennis has a Leslie. Be... Dennis has a Leslie too. Yeah, yeah. My my girlfriend's Leslie, and Vinny's girlfriend's Leslie, and you got Leslie. You got a Leslie. Yeah, you got a Leslie. Leslie. I used to like Mark because his vibrato was the same speed as a slow Leslie. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> right. You nailed it. <laughs> you could do it. Yeah, he sounds hey great. he sounds great on a new song. Let's bring Mike on. I want to bring Mike DeRosier on. You know him from Hi. Heart, the original drummer. Uh, thanks for joining us, Mike. Come on onto the screen. We're very Mike excited Rosa. to welcome another another great drummer hanging a banger hey, with us. Mike. How you doing, Mike? Hey, Mikey. How you doing? Good to Good. see y'all. 
Yeah, man. Well, you're an you're an Italian tonight, brother. You're one of us. You're a cousin tonight. You're one okay. percent. We we got your DNA back. You're one percent. I don't know if you knew that or not. So how would it, how would my last name sound then? De Rosier is the way I'm used to it, but I, yeah, De Rosie. We'll yeah, take the E out of Mike De Rosie. So Mike De Rosie. Yeah, De Rosie sounds Italian. De That's right. Sounds Italian. It could be. Huh. That yeah. really could be. Well, welcome here, Mike. It's so nice to see you guys, Dennis. Again, thank you for joining our show. There's so much going on. I mean, you know, the last uh, 53 weeks or so, we've been doing this show, and obviously, so much of the uh, of the discussion. Hey, what you guys been doing on the lockdown? What you been doing to keep yourself busy? You've been recording, and a lot of pe people have been doing obviously the same thing. But here we are. Things are starting to open up. There's that we're at that end of the tunnel where the light is that we've been talking about for all these weeks, and it's so exciting. <clears throat> Dennis, you've got a lot of stuff happening. You've got, uh, a, you've had a new album. Now you've got a, this, another new album, a volume two of that album. I mean, Ooh. your head's got to be exploding. Well, it was my last, my last go around, you know, the Italian, right? You guys know Frontiers Records, the Serafino Perugino. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, they, they said- they I love Serafino. Uh, they wanted me to make a, a studio album back about 2017. And I said, why? So- uh, Yeah, really? <laughs> Finally, Jim Peterick from Survivor, he's my neighbor. He lives uh, like three blocks away. He says, Dennis, the world needs your music. I said, have the world text me. I don't buy that. <laughs> so anyway, he talked me into doing it. We did so many songs that uh, ended up being two volumes. But this is it for me, guys. You know how this goes. Uh, I don't want to make any more album. it's, albums. It's too much work. And, and people don't really care. They say, they pretend like they care. And then they say, hey, play Come Sail Away. You know, that's how, that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, well, right. I mean, but the it's thing true. is, you're, you've got so many hits. I mean, we've hosted your show so many times, and it just, it's just so amazing. I mean, so many of, of the, the, the celebrities, they have one hit, two hit, five hits, seven hits. I mean, your show is two hours of nothing but hits. And yeah, they were good, those guys from Chicago, and a white guy singing high and playing loud. They were, they were very good. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? You know, we were going. We did the best we could. Like I say, all I am really is an accordion player, Beatle dreaming. That's yep. all I've ever been. You know, I was playing the accordion. Uh, uh, Carmine, because my mother was the Italian one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she she told me it was the law, so I, I played mm -hmm. accordion, and uh, <laughs> you know, I saw the Beatles. On you, know, you, you know, you know what I found? I found this book. You remember this book, Vinny? Which was this is yeah. my book of gigs. Oh. Went out in 1961, my first wow. gig. Wow. And here, look, I don't know if you can see this. My first gig was $3. <laughs> that, can you see that? Yeah. Did you get look paid cash? Yeah, got paid cash. And PS 131, January 1961. Wow. Hey, you went up, then 370. Gig. And then 370. Woo. Unbelievable. Yeah, but wow, didn't you get some green stamp for that? And the price of the book was 29 cents. <laughs> it's stuff? almost more than what you got paid for the gigs. I know. <laughs> so, I Mike, know. you, you know, uh, obviously original drummer from Heart, you know, obviously a great, great band yeah. and everything, you know, we're, and we're going to touch a little bit about that. I'm so excited about Heart by Heart project that you've been doing. As I said to you off, off screen here, here at the Arcata Theater, Rock Roll Heaven here in Chicago, we've had this band booked three times that we've had to cancel every time because of COVID. So we're yeah. going to be bringing you back. But I actually, I saw you guys at, um, I believe it was APAP, you know, one of those trade show things that we have in our industry in New York. And, uh, and I heard, uh, is it Summer? Is, is that her name? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking by, I'm like. She's right here. <laughs> she's, she's steering the boat here for me. Well, let me tell you. About computer stuff. Incredible. <laughs> I thought, I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know, Ann's here. It's, it's got to be Ann. I can't believe Ann came to New York for this thing. And I walked in and I saw you on stage and I was listening to Summer, just the way she attacked the stage and, and hit those notes. Unbelievable project you have, heart by heart. How's it going, that project? Well, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, Ann Wilson is a tough, that's a, that's a tough bill to fill. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. yeah, she does a great job. So that's, that's incredible. Great. That's great. 
We uh, we just uh, we just not too long ago filmed Ann Wilson's uh, 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 special here, television special here at our place. And again, you know, she filled uh, the room with the with I mean with Ann Wilson isms, you know that. that but uh, again, your project, uh, the Heart to Heart project, musically is just as good. And frankly, I don't want to say you know you can't really say better, but the fact is, it seems it seems to me, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, your material, the material that we all know. Um, as I'm listening to it, it seems like it's almost more aggressive or more lively, or you're really you're really coming at it. That's well, because you got a kick-ass drummer. You know, you got yeah, right. the man. Yeah, it's uh, you know, um, I think you have to have more. I don't know if I've got more energy than I used to have. Probably not. But but well, yeah, probably you feel the like, whole thing is fresh. The whole thing is fresh. You know. Right? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I I don't know how it is for you guys, but I do struggle night to night. I mean, finding the finding the gas to to be able to make it through a night. It's it can be tough. Did really? you I mean, did you stop as, playing for a while? No, not really. But um, hmm. I've got a I've got a heart heart going on. I've got AFib. I don't know if you guys know what AFib is. Yeah. Yeah. And your heart beats uh, messed up. All right. The full your time. your heartbeat is trying to catch a cool rhythm. Yeah. yeah, it ain't working either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, Vinny, he, Vinny told me that the other day. He was worried about the first gig he did two weeks ago, and uh, but he had no problem. No, nah. I haven't well, done a gig. Okay? I haven't done a gig since February 9th, so I can't comment on that one. You know. Well, well it, it, once up. once I get warmed up, I'm fine. I mean, it, it's uh, it's one of those things that the the body kind of takes over and my. It, it kind of corrects itself, and then once I'm, I'm there, I'm fine. But yeah. right. sometimes that first 15 minutes, I feel like I just have the band look back, <laughs> laying you on know, the who's floor. Who's that old dude on drums? Let's get some. Let's yeah. get the young guy. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, I'll it's just it's an great. amazing project. Go the ahead. performance on uh, Barracuda from those years ago is just oh, insane. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. Awesome. I had to play it a couple of times. I had to learn those all the ins and outs of that song it was well you know so we, we uh because of your brother i uh i had the 26 i love the big bass drum sound yep. and of course i started out trying to record that thing without without a hold or a pillow or anything yeah and so i always got hassled you got to put a hole in the bass drum you got to do this to yeah. It, oh yeah yourself. yeah that's bullshit so what i did was <laughs> i i had a gong i took the gong mallet off whittled down a wood beater that I had and stuck the, the felt mallet beater oh. on top of it. Oh, that. really? Oh, no and kidding. I played Barracuda with it. Yeah. Wow. I had tightened the, screw, the, you know, the <laughs> screws on the springs on the yeah, speed yeah. pedal. Tighten those springs up so the thing would come back faster. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah. That's wow. innovative. That That's thing. innovative. Yeah. It, it, it worked. Uh, that once I started playing that, that uh, the groove, they went and they were back in the room. Yeah, man, got to go with that. <laughs> it was a nightmare to play, but yeah. and it worked. I bet. Wow. You know, Dennis, on, on the new album, uh, uh, one of the two, I, I believe it was on volume one, you did the, a duet with uh, Julian Lennon. Was it volume one? Yeah, it was yeah. volume one to the good old so, day. What, what it, tell me about that song and tell <laughs> me how, you know, this whole thing, the two worlds, uh, the, the Julian Lennon and Dennis Young world, how'd that collide? Well, you know, it was this is my final album, and the, the title is 26 East, which was the address, my parents' home, where the uh, nucleus of sticks was formed in 1962. One year after you, I saw Carmine, 61? I, I, I got to go. So 61, <laughs> uh, we did that, we got together, but it wasn't until 64 where the little accordion player was watching the Ed Sullivan show and saw those guys, and I went, gee, that looks like a good job. So um, it was at that moment we decided we we're going to start playing rock and roll music, and I ditched what, the accordion. What did you see? The Beatles? Yeah. Saw the Beatles? Saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, yeah, first night. So, it, huh? so I'd written this song, Hello, Goodbye, which is on volume two, which just came out last week. Uh, and it was a Beatle-like song that uh, paid tribute to all their song titles from a fan's perspective. And I thought, maybe I'll get Jules to uh, sing it with me. And then I thought, no, he shouldn't sing that. So I went to the piano and wrote to the good old days. And I sent it to him cold. I didn't know the guy. Never met him. 
but I knew he had talent. It sounded like his dad. And um, he wrote back. He said, yeah, uh, I want to do it. I love the song. So we met in New York. There's a studio in Brooklyn. I can't remember the name of it. And uh, Mario McNulty, he's the engineer. And we went in there and um, we recorded the tracks and a great guy. And I came home and that was it, you know. And so it, it, you can imagine when you're a 17 year old kid looking at these guys like they came, they landed from Mars, these Beatle guys. <laughs> uh, they were the greatest job creators in the history of the music business. All of mm -hmm. us are sitting here because, you know, because of what they did for us. And so uh, I, uh, that's where the, to the good old days song came from. Did you have a, a a John Lennon moment during that at all? That if, I mean, he, he's got the look, he's got the sound. That it, at any point, did you have a moment? I never mentioned his dad ever, or, or I mentioned the Beatles once in context where I said I was trying to write this song and I played it for him. But I did. I thought you'd be better uh, served by by doing this one. But no, I was very careful because look, you know, when McCartney sings, "Boy, you're going to carry that weight a long time." He could mm -hmm. be talking about those Beatle guys. And I think, you know, Jules is a very talented kid. And you talk about carrying a weight. Carmine, yeah. did anybody give a shit who your dad was? Nobody cared who my dad was. Yeah. So I can't yeah. imagine carrying that, you know, that with him his whole life. But he's, just, he's a very sweet guy. Hmm. Yeah. Excellent point. Yeah, like, I can um, imagine being John Lennon's kid, you know, always being geez. compared to him. It must be awful. Nope. Can't imagine it. Well, that's what happened with Vinny. He's always being compared to me. Yeah. <laughs> How'd it work until, out, Vinny? Until I pass his ass right oh. up. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Hey, Good wait, one. I know you're going to ask uh, Mike a question, Ron, but let me let me ask uh, Mike. Do you remember the the, uh, the drum off we did the second one with Buddy Rich? Uh, you, and you kidding you, me? You hung out. You hung out at my house for uh, <laughs> during that time. Well, he's got it. Oh, look oh at that. There, it there it is. There's the picture. Buddy Rich and Mike DeRoshi right there. Great right? shot. And, and the, the story I, I always tell nice. is, the story I always tell from that is <laughs> at the end, we always played together, right? Yep. So I, I said, well, who wants to follow Buddy? Mike, how yep. about you? Nope, not me. Vinny, yeah. what about you? You're fast. Nope, not me. Everybody there that was there, nope, not me. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I'll do it. I got two bass drums. Yeah. How <laughs> about that? Oh, that was. Yeah. Yeah. Was, he, yeah. Was the best. he was the best. I mean, but it was amazing that we got him to do that because he, he used to hate rock drummers. But I think he uh, he definitely opened up after that. I mean, me, me and Vinny met him, and he was he was mad at me. I thought, and his and his daughter invited me into the the room at the Starwood when he was playing. The dressing and, room. Come on in. Come on into the dressing room. You know, tell tell Buddy the story. I said, no way. I'm not going. You know, I heard that bus tape. You know, and uh, <laughs> and then then she goes, no, come on. I said, Vinny, you come with me. So Vinny came with me, and we ended up smoking a joint with Buddy. Like it, we were both taking a hit, and we said this before on the show, taking a hit and going, I can't believe we're smoking a joint with Buddy Rich. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And yeah. then he went out and played his butt off. Flawless. Really, Flawless. Really, really, really amazing. You know, All right, you go go ahead, ahead, Ron. No, I'm just, you know, I, I just, you go back and, and it's hard to imagine, you know, you think about Hart, you think about, you know, when, when they were so, when Barracuda came out and, you know, the early 70s, but they actually started, you know, Steve uh, uh, and, the, and, the, and the girls got together in 1969, actually. So right around there, and then obviously Mike was right there. And uh, my question, Mike, is, you know, in 69, aside from Janice, of course, you know, wasn't a whole lot of female fronted situations that were respected as a, from a rock and roll perspective. Obviously, Motown, obviously the doo-wop, obviously the, the, the Supreme style kind of situation. But as heavy rockers, what was it like? I mean, you joined this female fronted band, rock band. Did you have any, I don't know, preconceived notions or reservations? Like, wait a second, a female fronted, you know, hard rock band? I don't know if this is going to work. Or did you go into it both feet forward? No, I, I, uh, I was working at a factory. And, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess no, that, that, was that, that was that. That answer was that. That answer was that one. I'll take anything you got. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
There's dogs in the band? Sure, I'll play yeah. the video. There you go. <laughs> but was there, was there a feeling of any kind of a, I don't want to say concern because the talent was there, but I mean, it wasn't, it was, it was unique. It was a unique situation. No, they, they, some people that I worked with recommended that I go, because I was thinking about getting in a, a situation, playing with somebody. And so the people that I worked with knew the band and said, you should go check them out, because I think they're looking for a drummer. And uh, they got women in the band, but they're really, really good. And, and uh, yeah, so I went and took a, a look at him. And I mean, and, you know, she she's just born with that thing. Oh, yeah. She just has it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and Nancy's so not a bad singer either. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know? I mean, they're, as musicians, they're great, both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, they're tremendous. So I saw I mean, them, it's... and there was no doubt in my mind. I want this, you know. Can I be in this Gosh, thing? Yeah. So as you're doing it now, though, as you're going out there and you're doing the music of heart, I would imagine, you know, uh, you're you're getting uh, tremendous reviews, obviously, and um, and people are just just loving it. You know, I've seen the audiences; they just respond so well. Are you still feeling? I mean, you you mentioned earlier it's getting a little tougher every year, I guess, for all of us. But, uh, but when you're on stage, are you still feeling that same uh, magic man feel from back in the day? Yeah, I, I just, I, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like doing mm -hmm. it. I really, at this point, and I kind of, uh, we've kind of talked about how much longer. I, I really don't know how, I, I'll do it as long as I enjoy it. Um, as, as long as I've got the gas in the tank, I'll keep playing. And I feel like in some ways I'm better than I used to be, hopefully, so... Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just keep at it. I I like nostalgia anyway. I like to go see bands uh, doing what they did. I'd like to mm -hmm. see as versions of songs are as close to the original as as they can get away with doing it. Yeah. Thank goodness. Uh, so, I love to see yeah, that I, because I, a lot of. A lot of bands, uh, you know, you find like even, you know, our friends in Chicago love the band Chicago. Obviously, we, we all do, you know, and, you know, go to some of their, their current shows and they fray from that original uh, song, you know, like the exact way. And people want to sing along. I mean, they do. Yeah. And, well, you know. Yeah, I, I believe that that uh, to satisfy that nostalgia thing, if that's what that's what I think most people go to see bands you know, our, our vintage, yeah. that's what they go to see them do. And if you deliver that thing that they grew up, you know, playing on the dashboard or whatever, playing the drums, right. doing those fills, right. doing all the guitar shops and all that, you you want to hear that. And you, you go away yeah. unsatisfied if you don't get that. So uh, no, that's right. the way it is for me anyway. I'm sure so for That's most. what we do. And that's what, that's our, our purpose, I guess. Oh, and it's that, a great show. Doing it that way is the fun way. I, if you want well, to morph should, the songs into heart. something else, I'm should, sorry. Uh, I was going to say, we should do the heart show and the rod experience together. Heck yeah, yeah. man. That's uh, the thing yeah, I do. I, I, got members of the, I got members of the Rod Stewart band, and we do like the 1979 kick-ass Rod Stewart shows, and we do it like we used to do the show, you know? Yeah. And, it's really, it's, and you know, there's got to be, as, 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 as and people I love begin to... Too. Excuse me, Ron. Like with Young Turks, I never played Young Turks live. I was out of the band, you know, I co-wrote it, but I never played it live. First time I played it live was in that show, probably at Ron's place. Yep, by me. You know? I thought the Rod experience, I didn't know it was Rod Stewart. I thought it was Rod, the guy who used to fix your Pantera. <laughs> <laughs> His experience. I don't know how you... I you didn't experience. say the Rod Stewart experience. You just said the Rod experience. The Rod. Yeah. This guy used to fix his car. I remember yeah, that. Right. He's pretty good. <laughs> Dennis, <laughs> these freaking guys here. Anyway, um, you know, uh, your songs, Dennis. Uh, I mean, you've written so many of the Sticks hits, obviously. And so many people love them. I mean, from all walks of life. Um, there's got to be some story that you can recall of people that... Um, just came up to you and say, you know, Dennis, I just love Babe, I love Lady, I love, you know, all the Grand Illusion, all that stuff, that were not necessarily musicians. I mean, I know you have, you, you do something, you've done something with, like, Adam Sandler, for example. Was that the question? Oh. Yeah, yeah, what did you do with, like, Adam Sandler? Well, Adam Sandler, you know, he's just, uh, his sister was a huge Sticks fan, that's all, and so he was in the house 
when they were, you know, in, like the North Koreans brainwashing their our brothers and sisters with that music. And so he became a big fan. And, uh, you know, so I, uh, you know, met Adam, Adam three or four times. And, uh, and good you bring it up because I was at a party of his about four years ago and we were uh, singing and playing. And Tom Morello, the great Houdini, was there. Yeah. And so I met him and he came up and said he was a huge Styx fan, which, you know, shocked me a little bit. He's the Rage Against the Machine guy. He said, oh, good. He said, yeah, I came to see the Paradise Theater and Kill. I said, well, that's, that's pretty cool. So then I, I wrote this song with Peter Rick for uh, this album called The Last Guitar Hero, which is a song about how technology is replacing everything under the guise and the metaphor of a guitar player being replaced by, you know, we don't need guitar players anymore. They're annoying and they're show-offs. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> this is the song. Well, and, there's none of them here, so we'll yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, no, listen, I'm, I, you guys, here's the, here's the pecking order in rock and roll. You know this, for crazy. The first three most important people in the, in the band are the guitar player, the guitar player, and the guitar player. <laughs> then, then the drummer, then, uh, the, and, and then the keyboard player, and then the bass player. And what's the deal with bass players? Carmine, what's the big deal? They play one note at a time. Why do they get the same amount of money as we do? <laughs> <laughs> You're playing. That's pepper. a good point. Idiot, idiot, all this stuff. This guy's going thump thump. Big deal. Anyway, you should charge by the note. Stop. And, stop and now when you play with Tim Bogart, he plays too many notes at a time. Yeah, yeah that's it, true. Let's face it. Can we all agree? Uh, guitar players are show-offs. Anyway, um, so I wrote this song. And I went, "Who is the last guitar hero?" And I thought maybe Morello because he's the last guy to do something unique with the guitar. So I just I contacted him like Julian Lennon, although I knew him. And he said he'd be happy to do it. So he played in this song, The Last Guitar Hero. And, you know, he's one of those guys, like, three notes in, you know who it is, which, yeah. is, which, is, the, which is the deal. And The Last Guitar Hero is, is on volume two, right? It's on volume two. And, listen, we all know this, guys. They talk about nostalgia. We're talking about that. Everybody loves nostalgia. Just rock critics don't. But yeah. everybody loves it. Even yeah, right. people are saying, you remember when I was two and I was being breastfed? That was great. So um, my thought is... Uh, with nostalgia, people come up to me now, or you know, people that I owe money to, and they say things. <laughs> like, uh, they say things like this. They say, um, <laughs> I, I, "I can't believe how much your music that you were involved in creating has, you know, had an impact on my life." Mike, you, everybody hears this, okay? We hear it over and over. <laughs> but you know, the truth is, when I was making this shit up, I was going along. Finny, I was just trying to kick Queen's ass. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. Hart, who needed them? They were too good. I don't need yeah. you, yeah. for instance, playing all these wonderful drum parts. Who needs that? I need less competition, don't you, Carmine? You agree? Yeah. yeah. That's my attitude. When we, when we grew up with the Vanilla Fudge, we were just trying to kick the rascal's ass. <laughs> Dino right. Danelli. I'm saying yeah. it out loud. Yeah, yeah man. Dino. <clears throat> the man. Yeah. Dino. You, know, when you look at me on the Ed Sullivan show, I look like a... A high energy, spaced out Dino Dinelli. I you saw know? you. I saw you do this. Set me free. Why don't you, babe? Yeah. Bop, yeah. Boom, boom. yeah. <laughs> Here's Dino Dinelli. Watch me, Tommy. Ready? Yeah. 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 He was awesome. He was awesome. <laughs> and I had, I had the in 2018. I played with the Rascals. It was with uh, Felix and Gene, and we played all those great songs. You know, like you got those, all those great songs. So many songs, one after another. And we played at Ron's place. Did mm -hmm. we play at your place? Yeah, we did play absolutely, at your place. Absolutely, absolutely. And it was so much fun, you know? And I was playing it, you know, back in the day. I, so I met Dino before he was in the Rascals. He was in a group called Ronnie Speaks and the Yellow Rods. He's still doing this, you know, the way he played. And he his bass drummer, he, I'll never forget, he was opening up, Mike, for Gene Krupa, right? Hmm. And I, was, I went into the Metropole using my older brother's draft card to get in. And I was sitting there waiting for Gene to come on. And this guy, Dino, was playing with his band. And he did this, this groove that it was eight notes, like, doo -doo, ya -ga -goo -goo, ya -ga -goo -goo, ya -ga -goo, with his hands. And then his bass drum was going, do ya -ga -goo -goo, ya -ga boom, ya boom, boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom. And I was sitting there going, wow. We had the 24 bass drum, no hole in it. And yeah. it sounded amazing. And I, when he came off, I said, wow. You really blew my mind. He's twirling sticks and all that. And I said, what was that beat you were playing? And I can't remember if I wrote it out or if he wrote it out, but I left that place after seeing Krupa with that groove written out 
And I went home and practiced it. And then he made it, you know, and the rascals, and he started, I started hearing about the rascals. And I started going around to all the clubs, watching them, and watching Dino. And they didn't have a bass player, so his bass That's because really they heard it. Dennis's thing before. <laughs> about That's bass true. players. That's now, in fact, I don't know if you know this or not, but, but all these Italians here, is, or my average friends say the Italians, uh, John Panazzo, Chuck yep. Panazzo, the rhythm section in sticks. Uh, you know, Calabrese from across yeah. the street. We lived on the same yeah. street. What is it with the Italians and the drummers? Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Chicago. Right. <laughs> Dennis, I want to ask you, though, so, you know, it, it's been so amazing to watch your career and, and, and you know, even, even retrospectively. And you're talking about um, some of the stuff, obviously, so, so theatrical from Mr. Roboto. Hunchback, what you did with Hunchback in Notre Dame, the, the name, the Isle of Misanthrope. I mean, so, things are so deep, so theatrical. Where do you get your inspiration for some of these things? I mean, it's so deep. I think, uh, guys, you can back me up on this. My mortgage payment <coughs> has been the best motivator. Um, I don't know. Look, I, I, I've said this a million times. I, here's what I do. As a, as a writer... I find some chords that I like, then I stick notes on the chords that I like, then I find words that fit on the notes, and then I just uh, give you my point of view about my personal life and the world I see around me, hoping that you guys and those people out there will find themselves in my story. That's what songwriters do. You hope that what you come up with will connect with lots of people, and when you do, they pay you handsomely. So for when people say, what's your favorite song? I, I don't have a favorite song that I, right. I did because after I write them, they belong to the people. They don't belong to me. It's what, what, what they make of them rather than what I was thinking. That's the yeah. important thing. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's, it's just a, it's amazing. Some of the like, like who would think, you know, do this great body of music. And then you're thinking, OK, now I got to come up with a title. Um, the Isle of Misanthrope comes to mind. That's, I mean, how does that ha <laughs> how does even happen? Yeah, right. You're going to get me going down a rabbit hole with these people. But let me just say, the last year and a half, if we haven't figured out that the human race is filled with so many jack wagons because they can't <laughs> wait to tell us about themselves on social media or the politicians, I belong to this group. I, hey, thin crust pizza, no deep dish. Ah, you, you an idiot. So I, yeah. does everybody in this country hate everybody? Is that what's going on? Because it looks like mm -hmm. it. And a misanthrope yeah. is just a person who hates humanity. So I started thinking, what's going on? I mean, did I, did I, was I asleep for four years? I woke up and suddenly everybody doesn't like each other? Do you yeah. remember this ever? You're Carmine. You, you're older than me. A couple yeah. months, but truthfully. I remember I, love and peace. In my life. Love and peace. Remember that? That's it, man. You know, hey. I walk around like that, and everybody's right. love and peace, man. All the peace signs and the love signs everywhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah, now I it's that Sammy Davis Jr. Seattle. used to do it. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, now it's, you know, here's the thing. Let's face it. We all know what this is. Carmine, Vinny, Mike, I say bring back the fist fight. Yep. <laughs> he says something stupid. Remember those days? Yeah, man. You hold your tongue because you're afraid you get smacked upside your head. Yeah. Now, every jack wagon can go in the anonymity of the internet and say the most egregious things things they would never say and hide to anybody yeah. and, and hide all well, those respect too yeah. even if you even if you don't like the person you respected them you know you didn't yeah. you know yeah. call his mother names you know yeah it's you know it's 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 dangerous for men <laughs> it's dangerous for and for this country we yeah, see oh, oh, yeah. last year and a half where people are just going wait a minute What's wrong with you? You know, this Use. is easy. People, I, I still think the media, you know, oh, yeah. cable news, they do all this to get us to watch and listen, right? Yeah. Causing conflict constantly because people like conflict. Let's not, you know, nobody watches the Girl Scout, you know, selling cookies. They want yeah. to see the Girl Scout being, you know, yeah. dragged away. It's the style yeah. of the day. Conflict. These people yeah. are constantly yeah. on TV masquerading as people in the news they've got a political point of view they're just arms of a party and that's dangerous to us hey, hey, dude, do you remember when the news used to be the news the news yeah, yeah. Forget about it's, it. not, it's not you know, political stuff it's, now it's, it's opinions news. now it's opinions but yeah. what about today that that thing that that 
that building that collapsed in Miami. I, mean, I that didn't see that. Unbelievable, man. It's a 12 story building collapsed. Yeah. One o'clock wonder- in the morning with everybody in bed. I wonder if it's oh a sinkhole. My- really? Right? Oh, probably, yeah. probably was. Right you know, we, we live, uh, we live, I live in Florida. We're in New York now. I live in Florida. And we live, and there's a big lake where we are. And I was, I went down with, with a friend of mine. He went for coffee, and I, he gave me a little tour of the neighborhood. Because I've only been there a year. And he said, I said, yeah, that's a nice house. taking a long time to build. He goes, well, you know, that house was built where the lake used to be. Part oh, of the lake was in there. I said, what do you mean used to be? He said, yeah, mm-hmm. they brought in all this rocks and dirt and everything, and they filled up the lake. Oops. So God knows. Uh-oh. You know, now, South Florida, uh, Miami. outside West Palm. Uh, that Where? was in Miami. That was in Miami. Yeah. That St. Cole. I got a place in Boca. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Well, I'm I'm close. Twenty minutes from you. Oh, fantastic. We should get together. My drummer, Mike Mor- <laughs> Mike Morales. He lives in West Palm, right by you. There yeah, you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know, good. look. You've been in Florida. Listen, is this a yeah. collaboration of crazy people? <laughs> <laughs> it is I, love, I like it. I like it, Dad. I'm having a good oh, time. Oh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. You just, yeah. you, it's wonderful. But no, well, we, we'll, we'll exchange emails and we'll get some numbers. And uh, I think yeah. I have your number. Well, whenever you're down there, you call me. Absolutely. That would be, yeah. what a reunion that would be. That would be a great yeah. time. You guys are going to meet at IHOP and do a little... A little uh, karaoke at I IHOP. Hop. We could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hop. What I hop? There's no I hop down there. Little Denny's, mm. little There's karaoke no Denny's. We could there do. are no diners. Hardly any diners down there. No, right? that's no. a New York any thing. Any diners? It's unbelievable. There's New a deli. Thing. There's a deli right by my house. Yeah, delis, but no diners. Yeah, no. As and long you as know, they have we're salami, in New York right? now. We went looking for bagels yesterday, like a bagel place. There's no bagel places here anymore. You know. <laughs> It's like That's serious. You, you want, there used to be one, you know, three or four in the, right in the block area. Now you got to walk 10 blocks to get a bagel, a real bagel. So I went to this place on the corner. And I said, let me have a couple of bagels. A dollar seventy each. <laughs> you know, I mean, where's my bagel? <laughs> you might as well just have toast. Yeah. All right. So now, toast. okay. So, all right, guys. Now we've relegated to be talking about bagels and toast. What is wrong with you guys? Hey, Stop well, being, You're hey, killing me. Every bagels week are great. We do, <laughs> I'm sure they're great. But every week we are here hanging and banging. Everybody, they've been following us, Artists on Lockdown. We got a, sh- we got a little commercial that you guys did about next week. Make sure everybody, you guys got to be liking us, sharing us, telling everybody about Artists on Lockdown, hanging and banging each week, Thursday, 6 p.m. Central. Let's see what we got coming next week. Ben? 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 <laughs> it's there. He was, Action. So, was so engaged, he went to sleep. Action. <laughs> Action. Coming next week, we have a bagel <laughs> recipe from Carmine. <laughs> Without and the live. Ben. Some fresh butter from Mike ben. from his farm. <laughs> live from Carnegie Deli down in New York, Manhattan. Yeah. All right, go. we're gonna we're gonna keep on rocking and rolling here. I'm sure Ben will be able to find our commercial. So, you know, um uh, my, <laughs> he went out for a bagel. <laughs> He's out for a bagel. We're going to call him Bagel Ben. You went to do the Sting podcast. That's just neat. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, there we go. Uh-oh, there we go. Oh, oh, shit, I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> I'll show that. I, oh, we have Tracy Guns next week. And Don Jameson. Don, Don Jameson. Yeah, no, no from doubt. That metal show and the Don Jameson show. Go so check it out. July 1st. Carmine I and Ron Ones. What's his name? Ron. Ron. Whatever. His name is. Ron Onesti, the guy with the meatballs. So check it out, July first. Thanks. <laughs> Hang in a minute, Dennis. He's making fun of my meatballs. You're supposed to defend me, Dennis. He's making it's, fun uh, of my meatballs. Uh, no, don't do that. But don't say a word about the brajol. Hey, brajol, yeah. The brajol. The brajol. We have that too hey, here now. I haven't had his brajol yet. Oh, you. Oh, oh really? <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Yeah, you got to buy me dinner good. first there, Vinny. <laughs> no, it does meatballs, too. Yeah. Ron's meatballs. Ron's meatballs. We have a lot of fun here. Mike, I got to yeah, ask so you Mike, something. When you play Ron's place, he, he makes the best meatballs. Yeah. You're love it. You're going to love, love it, Mike. All right. I'm in. That's a good enough reason to go there. <laughs> Thank goodness. I, I, I know. 
It reminds me of one, I can't remember one performer, but we were on this show here and we're talking about the meatballs. And we, we just talked it up. And man, you're going to have, I love it. Ten minutes talking about the meatballs. And after it was all said and done, he goes, great, I'm a vegetarian. So <laughs> that sucked. So, uh, but Mike, I did want to ask you, you know, congratulations. You're an inductee in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but you were inducted <clears throat> by Soundgarden's Chris Cornell. And obviously, you know, we yeah. lost Chris. Nice. And, um, now, obviously, can you can you take me to that night of the uh, of the induction? Why was Chris asked to induct you? And uh, you know, tell me about your relationship as a band uh, with Chris. I I don't know why he was there. To tell you the truth, I don't know why he was a. Uh, <laughs> There's got to be a reason. Uh, it was there was a bunch of people from Seattle. There was guys from Alice in Chains there. And, right. And, and Soundgarden. I, I don't know why he was there. Uh, he didn't. He didn't seem to feel like he was that comfortable with doing it really? he apologized to me he couldn't remember how to pronounce my name he was he was just uh it was uncomfortable for him yeah wow uh, as far as my experience it was uncomfortable for me too i didn't uh oh uh, yeah because you guys have been broken up forever uh, yeah i didn't really have a desire to do it um <clears throat> for a number of reasons and so everybody else was in to the idea of doing it, so I said, "Okay, I'll, I don't want to be the only one." So I, I went down and we rehearsed. I said about three words, Dan and Nancy, the whole time. Uh, we did the gig, and that was that was pretty much it. It was it was strange, mm -hmm. and I thought I still think about what happens to band. What yeah. happens to people, Dennis? Yeah. You were talking earlier about the the vibe in general, kind of. With with the country, maybe the whole planet, but what, all these, most of the bands that were inducted that day, uh, they're not together anymore. Probably eighty percent of them. And they're not talking to, and they're not talking to each other either. Yeah, <laughs> you stand over here, I'll stand over here. Yeah, or, or your table lawyers here, are behind our them. table will be yeah. over here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you make all this dough. You're you 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 get to the place that you dreamed about being when you were a kid together and then you get to a point and you can't stand somebody else's guts you know? <laughs> and Dennis you could speak a lot to that obviously I mean and you know and I just got to tell you that I am such a, a, a um, I'm so grateful or I'm such a, a what's the word I mean besides being a fan but the fact that you are all about this whole reunion thing. The Sticks is hitting 50 years next year or now, whenever it's, it's the next few months, and you are willing to do this reunion and the other guys aren't. What, what the hell? Well, look, it, here's the thing. There's three guys. It's Tommy and JY and me. That's Sticks. That's all that's left. But Chuck appears once in a while, but it's not like there's a band called Sticks and me. It's just the way, listen. You get in a room with these guys and you, you have the best intentions. All rock bands are like this. You know, the big story, Mike, is not that the rock band broke up. It's that they stayed together. That's yeah. the story. When did that happen? <laughs> because what's going to happen is, in any band, all the participants, particularly when they're successful, mm -hmm. want to feel they were responsible for that success. And the difficulty arises when someone doesn't feel that they're getting enough props for the overall success. And what makes bands generally generally great is the weaknesses. Follow me on this. Mm -hmm. Makes a band unique, okay, is the fact that some of the guys can't do things like Buddy Rich, but they can mm -hmm. do things their way. And that's the truth for all the musicians. So they do something that they can do, which turns out to be unique. And when those people get together in a room, they make something. They make magic. That's different. Yeah. Because that's, you can get the best it. player in the world in a room, put them in there, and it's nothing. It doesn't make any sound. It's just great players. But a band, a rock band, it's their weaknesses can become their strengths. Don't tell me a, a David Byrne from uh, talking. If he could sing like Rod Stewart or Elvis Presley, he would have. <clears throat> but there wouldn't have been talking heads. So he did it his way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happens? People, they stay together a long period of time. The drummer, the drummer wants to feel he, he's most responsible. So does the bass player, the keyboard player. And we all know guitar players are just a pain in the ass. Anyway, I'm <laughs> but am I right? That's yeah, right, dude. absolutely. Right. Well put. You know, we, we were Vanilla Fudge. You know, we broke up. We had different Vanilla Fudge versions. 
And then we had a manager that said, we, we got to get you guys back together because you guys are too great to be, you know, separated. And we got back together in like 2005 or six, whatever. And we pretty much been together until Tim retired, but the three of us stayed together and we're still together. And, you know, yeah. And, and like the other day we had a bit of an argument over the mixing of the thing, but, you know, and the engineer, one of the guys said to the engineer, hey, We've been together 54 years. We know how each other react, you know? Yep. Yeah, I, so, can, I, I, you know? I can understand that. Yeah, it's, it, there's there's going to be those times. Yeah. You, you can't help. There's going to be disagreements. But w why does it, it why does it end up having to be such a catastrophe? You know, everything... Yeah gets to a point to where even the smallest things sometimes can set people off and you can't, and you're doing so well a yeah. lot of time. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Two things. Number yeah. one, when you lose sight of the idea when you're in band that all boats rise with the tide, when you lose sight of that, the band is in trouble because the collective is what's really important. Now there have been people who says, I like this one. He's my favorite. I like Ringo. It's that kind of shit. Yeah. But ultimately, most of the people will like mm. the thing. Okay. Yeah, Here's my comment. Carmine, back me up. I want you to bet. Vinny, you've been in a lot of bands. Listen to me. Two yep. reasons rock bands break up. It's rarely really creative differences. I think it's drugs and alcohol. Yeah. But he's doing shit they shouldn't be doing and l using. That's right, bro. Number one. The second reason somebody slept with the bass player's wife. <laughs> <laughs> a bass player right? who would do that but you know what here's an inkling though i mean you you touched on it dennis you know it's it's you three guys carmine it's you three guys you know through history yeah you look at heart and and i don't know call me crazy but if you look at the past members mike was there 35 40 past members of heart I mean, there's, got, well, there's, there's a little inkling there of what's going on. You mean member, members? You're talking about members? Members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. members. I, I think uh, there, are, there are some people that just, uh, like Dennis was talking about, that the chemistry, it's all about mm -hmm. chemistry. It really is. I mean, that's, yep. and some people are just in denial about it. They don't, they don't want to acknowledge that that is a real thing. That, yeah, it is that you change a couple of ingredients and uh, it's not going to be that same pie anymore. It's just, it's not. And so it, you have to recognize that, or if, if you want to deny it, you got to go off on your own and make it on, <clears throat> make it on your own with your own thing, with your own style, your own whatever. And a lot of people think they, they, they have somebody whispering in their ear. Yeah, man, you can do it on your own. You don't need us. You don't need them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they start buying into it. It's the gone. career whisperer. You yeah, right. are a star. Hey, Tiger Beat, you are a star in your own right. Just go yep. over by there. They forget how hard it was to go from here, which is nothing, to there. Because once yep. you're there, mm -hmm. you know, you, you start to get myopic. He says, oh, yeah, we deserve this. The minute you start to thinking that you deserve anything in this universe, right? <clears throat> You're out of your mind. Nobody yeah. deserves nothing in this universe. You get what you get. And, 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 and when, they, when they come back and they say, fairness? Come on, come on. Where's that kind? Fairness is in the eye of the beholder. It's like, you. Yep. No, but there's no such thing as fair. It is what it is. I hate saying that, but it's true. But for you as the drummer in heart, those early records, that was a band. Yeah. 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 That was a sound. Was name Mike, was there another producer named Mike? Who, who produced your records? those heart records uh, Mike Flicker, yeah. yeah yeah i met him once and i thought yeah. you know what great those records sounded great oh yeah. my gosh yeah it sounded the yeah, drum, it everything sounded present live not over processed you could imagine to me the, the best records unless they're novelty are they sound like a live performance somehow in a great room where everything is fitting together those are my favorite yeah. and that's you yeah mm. like. That's right. Well, I used to love I used to love uh, hearing Carmine's drums on just about anything he ever did, and that was <laughs> that was what I was trying to get. That was yeah, what I was going for. I'm yeah. still trying to get that. Yep. 
<laughs> well, spend less time on your hair and more time on the drums. Oh, shut okay. up, you. <laughs> and that's I'm jealous. Wrong. I went wrong, come on, because I wanted to sing like your drums, and nobody cared. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, you, did a, you, you, you once told me how Mark influenced you uh, when I first met you. And, and I could see it because you, know, you got a great voice like him. I mean, oh he's 74 gosh. years old also. And he sings so damn good. My voice is kind of going, you know, I don't know why, but it's, uh, I got maybe reflux or some stuff. And you know, my top end is gone. But Mark is just so powerful and still yeah. so great. Yeah, he's yeah. always been. You know? I've always been an amazing singer, amazing, you know, and an amazing organ player. Yeah. You know? yeah. Are you, uh, so you're going out this year, I believe, Dennis, with the, the 40th anniversary at Grand Illusion? No, you're not hey, doing that? Here's what it is. God willing in the creek don't leak. I'll be going out maybe February next year. But listen, guys, I'm 74. Carmine, you're like, what, 74. So, yeah. um... I'm 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 gonna let the, all the bands that that want to go on test the water school first, because my theory is this: these bands have a couple of people in the band and very big alimony payments. Me personally, <laughs> I've been married 51 years. I didn't split my money anywhere, and yeah. I, I'm gonna watch because I don't need the pressure on myself mm -hmm. or on my audience to force it to say, "How is this working?" I think by next in the next six months, I'll have a clear picture that I'm supposed to go out. Next year, do the restaging of the Paradise, Ron. I know you're going to like to hear that. But really, oh, guys, yeah, man. No, here's what I think about the human race. Nobody knows nothing. Everybody that mm -hmm. shoots their mouth off, whether it's politicians, scientists, religious people, I think they, they're making it up half the time. Yeah. Because when they talk yeah. about settled science, back me up, guys. The Big Bang happened, remember? Boom. <laughs> science was settled. Right. It's just us that don't know what it is. We keep you know, right. scratch and sniff. I wonder how this works. So me, for me, I'm, I'm not going to put my audience or myself at risk. No, that's just it. Now, honey, don't divorce me. I'm begging you. <laughs> <laughs> Love her. Love her. And, and Mike, you guys, but you guys are coming out with Heart by Heart, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to. Play as much as we can get away with this summer, and uh, and beyond that, I don't know how many more years of uh, you know riding in a van and getting up mm -hmm. at four in the morning to go to the airport. I got in me. I'm mm -hmm. not as quite there as far as um, age wise. Yeah, you can't do that. I'm seventy. You can't do that. At four in the morning to the airport. Forget about it. That's uh, terrible. Get the we extra day to hotel. That. I'll tell you what, I love that Co-Bill uh, Carmine of, of the Rod Experience and yeah, Art by too. Heart. You hear what that, Mr. Great... Steve Love? You hear that? Oh, that's a fabulous one, man. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm first in line for that one. Um, I'm, I'm, Mike, I'm last in line. That's you're good. last in line, dude. Don't forget. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, because I'm hey, first in line, you're last in line. There's video on there, too, and last in line. What a bill. You're playing no, a lot get, of his that night. Well, he'll do his, no, no, he'll do his yeah. Sabbath thing. You do the Stewart thing. Yeah. He's doing the heart thing. All right, there you go. One more band, then we got a, a freaking battle tour. <laughs> yeah, I just drum had battle. Idea. We Why did that. We, you know, we did that, Ron. We did a drum battle tour before oh. we we played your place. It was really? a drum off. There was me, Vinny, Mike, and Sandy Gennaro, and wow. we went out and we played the Agoras and we sold them all out. And we did. Mm -hmm. We did. Uh, Mattel Sonics was the. Uh, was our oh, sponsor. Sure, the sponsor, yeah. And we sold out everywhere. And then we ended up in in uh, LA with ten thousand people at that at that drum off with Buddy Rich. It was so much fun. No, Not having a guitar player on there or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Right? No singers, no guitar no singers, player. No singers, no guitar oh really? Player. Just yeah. drums? Yeah, we had a marching band come in in the middle. We had the come drum on. Band. It was it was a great, great time. We had electronic uh, syndromes in the front. Yeah. I think I did a disappearing drum solo. I don't know if I did it on that one, but uh, we, well, we, Carmine, we, between, we had a good time. We had a good between, time. Between the fudge, um, uh, what else we got? Cactus. We got, uh, all, I mean, all your drum projects wars. here, drum, drum wars. wars. Yeah. And then uh, then maybe we'll do a rod experience. But, you know, you could basically be the house band here. Every weekend be. we can do something. <laughs> we can you do know? that. We can do that. 
Well, I got to tell you guys, uh, another great night. Dennis DeYoung, what could, uh, you know, I'm always pouring my heart out to you because you've always been such a good friend to us, as I mentioned, as I opened the show with. We love you very much and your family. Does, that, does so Dennis live around where you are? Yeah, man, he's uh, oh, he lives not too far. My name, in fact, my I was in Jim, Jim I, you, you, I was by Peterick's house not too long ago. I should have rang your bell. Well, that's why I live in a gated community. All keep... right, all right, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah. There you go. No, he is. Uh, he's. Uh, it's. It's a big deal down the south side. You're uh, Burr Ridge, right? Burr Ridge. Now, I'll, I'll, well, I'm in a gated community. We shoot on site. It's okay, Carmine. I'm not worried. <laughs> we got. <laughs> We got uh, snipers <laughs> posted. Anyway, all the best to you and the family, Dennis, Mike. Again, I look forward to. I'll be talking to Jerry. We'll figure out when you guys are coming over here. Yeah, let's go. Uh, we got to do it, everybody. Once again, thank you so much for joining us each Thursday. Hanging a banging artist of lockdown. I am with my brothers Carmine and Vinny every Thursday, 6 p.m. Central. Make sure you like us. Make sure you share us. Check out our podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio. We are all over the place. This was episode 54. We're in our second year. I guess our second season. I don't know how that's going to work. Hope to see you next week. We've got a big, big show. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting us here each week. Artists on lockdown, hanging and banging. See you next week, guys.